heaved all the way down ice by the Cats. Into the Wenatchee den. Far corner, McDowell trying to spin one towards the front. Kick, save, they score! And immediately, the Bobcats are on the board. And guess who? Stanislav Shakov. 113 into period number one. He's got his second goal of the series, and it's one to nothing. Bismarck. Undoubtedly, exactly what the doctor ordered for the Bobcats, who were on the board early last night as well at 5.02 of the first with a power play marker from Jakov, the big Russian. He reminds me so much of Alexei Kovalev with not only the skill but the size, which is such an unusual combination. Hard to knock down. And when you add the ballerina-esque abilities that he seems to possess, too, really hard player to shut down. Off the draw at center. There's a wraparound chance, and Nelson makes a save. A rebound chance in front. Just punched out to the near side, and then they hit. Oh, what a stop by Nelson. His coin had an empty net, and Nelson comes up with a golden nugget right at the far side post as he keeps it out with the paddle and only the paddle in a diving attempt. I was about ready to yawp goal myself, and Nelson spoiled the party for everyone. Here are the Cats icing it all the way down, and there's the whistle for it. Wow, what a stop by Nelson. And early on, that'll go as our Banner Bank banner save of the game. Make a banner save of your own. Talk to a Banner Bank banker soon. What a stop by Nelson to keep this a one-goal lead for the Bobcats early in period one, 148 into the first. And Bismarck with that early goal from Jakov. Enjoy the one nothing lead. Off the draw, it comes to the near side corner. Kazubski squeezed into the boards. Slips to the far side wall. Matthias tripped up. Penalty call coming. And I got to say, once again, the head ref late in getting that arm in the air. 18th of the season. Off the draw, this slips in back of the Wenatchee net and is handled by the Wild. Bismarck backing off in center. Plugged back into the red line, found and drained all the way down by Kovar. Salvato picks it up, goes circle to circle in his own zone, and then forward down the far flank come the Wild. Drop pass from Algren. Finds it after it kicked off a couple of skates, and now he loses control of it coming around the Bismarck net. That's stolen away by the Cats, and they roar off ice. Here's Kovar across the line, drops for Zhakov, slithers into the near circle and sends a sneaky backhander in. Good right pad save from Chase Perry. Rimshaw the other way for the Wild. Headman feed for Algren. Tries to set it down along the end line. That pass hit a skate. Rivera comes up with it. Up high for Rimshaw. Across the stripe far side for Salvato. Down the wall to the far corner. Now back up high at the far side stripe for Salvato. Pushed off the puck, which goes in back of the net. Trickles free, found by the Cats. And they will barely flank this one out past the snatching glove of Rimshaw at the near point. 30 seconds left in the power. 6.21 gone in period one, one nothing Bobcats. Face off to the right side of Nelson. Undoubtedly, Nelson, of all the guys on the Bobcats, is the guy who wants to have a better night and prove himself more so than last evening. There's a loose puck the other way, picked up by Jaka. Returns it up high for a shot by Diver. It comes off the end wall, hard side of the net. Red light goes on momentarily, but the goal is waved off as we have a hooking call coming on Wenatchee. Or is this going to go on Bismarck? Jakov is lobbying, but it's not because of an infraction. It's because he thought the goal went in prior to the touch-up for the Wild, which is not going to be the case. Loggins will sit in the box at 642 of period one. Puts Bismarck on their first power play of the game for the season. The Bobcats are 14.2%, 12th overall in the league. They went one for eight last night with the man advantage. They'll face the league's fourth best PK unit at 88.3%. That's a high-tech automotive penalty kill for the Wild. Face-off left side of Perry. As the power play gets going for Bismarck. Found in the far corner by Matthias, who whirls it around the near wall, but not out. Saved at the near side line once, then twice by Repensky, but not thrice as Coin slips the penny through the slot all the way down. Seven minutes into period number one. It's still one nothing Bismarck. They're looking to double that lead right now on a man advantage. Up ice here comes Diver. Drops across the line for Repensky. Sending back of the net, Salvato trying to squeak it through the uprights of Diver and Repensky cannot. Good keep 
by Rapinski. Now to Diver, center stripe to the far circle. Back up high for Diver. Rim near circle, Rapinski up high for Diver. Shuffles his feet, looks for an option, finds Rapinski again along the near side wall. He lost control of the puck, flips it in back of the net, doesn't reach Jaka before being dialed around the boards, but again not out as it's kept in by Sakeshi, and then a shot comes in from Rapinski near side circle. It's blockered away by Perry, found by a friendly... Face off left side of Perry in the Wenanchee zone. Off the draw, this is won by the Bobcats, but it leaks through the point men, Rapinski and Kovar, and works as a clear for the Wild. Up icer Zhakov, ropes a shot towards the net around a couple of defenders near circle, stopped by Perry, found and swatted the other way. Loggins up and ready to come out now, which he does, and each team is 0 for 1 on the power play. As we return to 5-on-5 hockey, nearly nine minutes in to this first frame. And Bismarck up by a straight digit, one to nothing. It's McDowell centering fee that's kept away from the goal mouth by the quick stick of Rimshaw. Diver saves the line for the Cats behind the net. Another centering feed from Jakoff. This one picked off by the Wild. They scamper the other way. Coin shot that's flipped wide of the net, hits the back of the cage. Wild players have the puck. Off the draw to the left side of Nelson. This one rolls free. Jokov finds it. Scrabbles back out of the zone at the Wenatchee line. The Wild rake it free, and a hopping puck is picked up down the far wall. Rivera just can't quite turn to a shooting position, though. And this is taken back by Nick Wallace. Behind the net, it slips free and goes right to the near side post. Now it comes free again. Wraparound chance denied by... Chase Perry off the try from McDowell, gets it off the far wall, clusters together, puck poked free, high slot. Algren takes a chop at this one, cues it to the far side wall. Now McDowell knocked down in back of the net, just a frenzy inside the Wenatchee zone between both teams. Finally, in some free space, Loggins will escort this puck back to center. Across the near side line, lost control of it. Has to go to the bench for a much needed change now. The other four did get off for a swap from the pine. This young man from Franklin, Wisconsin, has been paying dividends for Wenatchee since coming over just a, about a month or so ago. His first goal, though, since joining the Wenatchee Wild in his third point. And off the draw at center, here comes Kazupski, and his shot follies high into the mesh towards Section 107, northeast corner of the building off of Ricochet. It will work to get Wenatchee an offensive zone draw to the left of Nelson. And another timeout on the ice here. And again, we'll keep it right here on a couple of stations tonight. 560 KPQ, your home for Wenatchee Wild Hockey here in north central Washington. As always, if you're watching online, you are hearing us perhaps as well. If you decide to leave the sound up, that is, on Fast Hockey's website. And also, as I told you about, and we'll keep reminding you throughout the game, Bismarck Bobcat broadcaster Ryan Cunningham Made the long trip from Central North Dakota out here. Did last night's game. Apparently there's some really foul weather headed to the upper Midwest yet again. He's trying to beat a storm to get back home. He drove himself out here, so wants to get back before he gets stranded. And therefore asked earlier today if we could simulcast for him. And absolutely. So fans in North Dakota on Super Talk 1270 KLXX, welcome to our broadcast tonight. We go back to live action. A shot from Jones is blocked coming the other way Jakov found a loose raise and it almost was able to gobble it up and carry it towards the net instead it's picked up by McDowell in the zone Jakov trying to rope around defenders and now we got a penalty coming on the wild on the back check I believe for a trip or an interference which one is it it's gonna draw at 1250 it's a hook and it could go to Gumarov it's actually gonna go to Chris Jones so that Stanislav Jakov, man, he is some kind of spark plug for this Bismarck Bobcat team. When he's not scoring goals and checking guys all over the ice, he is drawing penalties. And he stays out for this power play unit. Bismarck's second power play of the first. They're 0 for 1. And again, time of this hooking call on Chris Jones is 12-20. It ices Wenatchee's high-tech automotive penalty kill for the second time in the first. And right off the draw, a spin around clear of the zone from Mike Coyne will get the pressure relieved early for Wenatchee. 
Diver quickly out from in back of his own net and down ice to the center circle. On the drop for Repensky, who drops to McDowell across the near side line. Back for Repensky in tight quarters. To Diver, far circle, now a pass paddled into the high slot at the hash marks. Kicks off the heel of McDowell and found by his opposite, 16, Salvato, who will clear. 35 seconds into the power play. Six and a half to go in period one, all tied at one. Trucking down the far wing, here's Sikesi. On his backhand around the net into the near side for Toscano. Back to Sikeshi in the near corner, back to Toscano up the wall, and now back to Repensky at the near side point. Center stripe now for Diver. Near side, Repensky a one-timer, and that's a pad save from Chase Perry. Kicks a rebound hard to the far corner, not out. Up high it goes, Diver, big shot, knocked down in front, loose, and this one caroms off a couple of bodies and crawls to the near corner. Back up high for Repensky, near side stripe. Over for Diver at the center of the blue line. Bonchi. Tying up his man, trying to get some help there as well from Loggins. Just can't clear the zone. Clicks off the far boards and back up high. Now to the near side, one-timer from Mapensky. Big rebound. Chunks to the near side boards off of Perry. 25 seconds left on the Bismarck power play that's produced plenty of shots, but nothing in the net yet. And finally, Mullen will get this partially cleared at least Past the red line and down to the Bismarck blue line as Wenatchee desperate to swap some of those PK members. Hard pass finds Geisler at the red line. Folds this one towards the far circle. Rudelier gets on it first for the Wild. And now Kazupski will just backhand it safely to center ice. Wallace on it there for the Cats to Diver. And he will send this one about two rows deep just down below us here in section 114. 157 to go in period number one. All tied at one. Mullen and Repensky with that stoppage of play can come out from their roughing minors. Face off near side of the neutral zone towards the Bismarck line. Off the draw controlled by the Bobcats. Here's Jakoff. Trying to get around. Harris shot stop made by Perry and I'm telling you just barely with that goal stick. And Jakoff and he'll fire it through you. Harris twisting around defenders through the middle, slips it in front, and this one goes harmless to the far side wall. Picked up by Jaka, barreling the other way. What a dangle and a poke check by Perry at the last minute, but Jaka was hooked up again, going to the net, this time by, I believe, DeMario, who will sit. Oh, it's Goudelier, actually. So, man, I'll tell you, this guy is a wrecking ball. Just give him the puck. Every shift, just make sure number 17 and Black has it. He gets the second penalty he's drawn tonight. He's got his club's only goal. And does he throw his weight around too or what? What an impressive specimen this young man is from Moscow, Russia. 18.34, the time of the call that'll ice the high-tech automotive penalty kill for the Wild for the third time in this first frame. Cats are 0 for 1. Rapensky a one-timer. That chipped off of somebody's stick and went well wide. Flub down the wall, found on the tee when Anchi clears it all the way out. Nelson forced to make a stop from 190 feet away as that was sent right on net from long distance. 60 seconds left in period number one. McDowell across the near side to the front of the net, but that was just as Rapensky couldn't keep the puck in and is dying back the other way. Gloved at now by Goudelier, can't keep it away from McDowell. Centering feed for Zhakov, and this one hits a body and goes to the far side post and then corner off a of ricochet and finally it's just barely thumbed out over the line handled by diver who finds jockoff at the center red chipped away from his reach by salvato and the cats have to bail as they were offside cats trade up in tight quarters in the center circle and just can't find their way across the line as again Entry is denied this time by the quick stick. Period last night, up two for 29 seconds. Off the draw, Rapensky a one-timer that's fought off by Perry. Back of the net, Rivera battling for the puck, can't come away with it. Goes up high for Diver. To the near circle, just to the instep of Sakeshi, he couldn't dial something in. Skip back up high, nine seconds left on the two-man advantage. Diver walking in from the point. Finds Sakeshi a one-timer, pad saved by Perry. Rebound behind the net, Bonchi gets there first. Tries to get it over for Matthias in some space along the far side. Reuter is out. We're back to five on four now. And the two-man advantage 
produces nothing for Bismarck. They still have 122 left on a five on four though. And this is found cleared out of the zone by Reuter after he blocked it and cued it very neatly away from a Bobcat at the far side of the blue line. 67 seconds left on the power play for Bismarck. Again, Zhokov some impressive maneuvering as he gets out the road and track and goes right through neutralized something much lower scoring. Usually you just don't see two barn burners in a row, although last night was really less of a barn and more of a burn for the Bobcats. Wananchi's way over the red line, rubbed out by Zhakov, who throws his weight into another Wananchi player and dislodges the puck. Kozupski back up with it. Gumarov traces it right down the slot. It's hopping around, but he follows it enough to get it to the near side circle for Matthias, keeping it alive. Blom out of the box. That'll do it for Wenanchi's power play. Or, and goes to the far side corner. All the way down ice. Icing waved off. Nope. Another penalty call on the way. And it's an elbow. And this one's going to go to Wenanchi. And James Mathias will sit. So this comes in at 8.15 of period number two. And the seesawing from one box to the other continues. So another power play opportunity for Bismarck. They have had carryover time to start this frame. They've had a five on three briefly for this second period. They're 0 for 5 in the game. And we'll look to get back on top of this one with a man advantage marker here. It's a high-tech automotive penalty kill for the Wild and off the draw. It's scrummed a bit before being found by Salvato, who wires this one back to the red line where it's gloved down by Diver. Picked up by Rapinski. Diagonally through the neutral zone for Zhakov, who lost a bit of an edge and kind of tilted that time, allowed the puck to come away from his reach. And now the Wild try to clear the zone, have given it away, and Diver a shot and a stop made by Perry, and a good one. Mark that one down, a good blocker save. Rebound comes near corner. McDowell. A pie for Rapinski. To the near side, a one-timer, they score! And Sakeshi left. Started with a face-off to the left side of Perry. It's collected by Rapinski, center stripe for Diver now near side, and now at the rim of the near circle, Sakeshi. For Diver, Sakeshi all the way across the box for Rapinski. Back for Diver. Had the one-timer partway cranked. Dropped it back, though, and then goes to the far side corner with this, where it's worked free in the wild. will clear it past the lunging glove of Diver all the way down. 30 seconds of the power play gone. Eight minutes left in period number two. 2-1 two Bismarck. And on the man advantage for a while longer for the Cats. Far side, Jones trying to line up a way to clear the zone. His first try failed. His second one didn't, but that one found its way into the Bobcat bench. But it did deflect off a of Bobcat in order to get there. So the faceoff will be moved to the neutral zone. Well, after a talk with the head referee, it looks like he disagrees, and this puck will move back inside the Wenatchee zone for a faceoff. So that's a break for Bismarck. 76 seconds left on the Bismarck power play. And in the penalty for off the draw, found cleanly by Wenatchee. Matthias finds the room and shovels it hard off the far glass and all the way down. And at that moment, DeMario gets off his seat and is ready to return in four seconds. And he is up and out now as we go back to five-on-five five hockey. And Bismarck drops to one for seven tonight with the man advantage. Found the back of the net inside the Wenatchee zone. Wild turning it over. Thrown back behind the cage. A couple of centering feeds fail. And then Wenatchee plunks another one free. Popped up high. Diver saves the zone. Across the far side. And out of the near side. This one-timer by Sakeshi's glove. And then a second chance is gloved down by Chase Perry. Whoa. Just leaks it back to center. Pop right back to the far corner again by the Cats. Overskated by Nuttle in back of the net. Near try for Matthew Perry. Near side board, Jakoff. Just trying to set it down on the high slot with a softy, and that got deflected down and banks back to center. Five minutes to go in the second. 2-1 Bismarck. Loggins giving chase to his man inside of the Bismarck zone. 
Dropped off the glass and back down ice. Coin tries to find Pisa near side. He blew one tire and then a second. Went down in a heap along the near side wall of the neutral zone. McDowell finally surges in, takes the puck back for Bismarck. So we've seen a few players lose their edge tonight. And Bismarck has iced this all the way down. And there's the whistle for it. Four and a half to go in period number two. And Anchi Wild hit the road after this series, a brief series and homestand that it makes up basically two games. Six and Seward's Folly that start next Thursday in Kenai River against the Brown Bears. And we'll have game one for you on 560. KPQ should start about 755 in the evening. Off the draw to the left side of Nelson. Bouncing puck, shot, they score! No, they wave it off, the red light on. How did that stay out? I think that puck went in and came out. Meantime, play continues the other way, and Perry has to make one save, and then another one coming straight off the deck. Let's get a look at the replay. Does that look like it actually went in and came out? And man, is Omar Mullen. Automotive penalty kill. 3.15 left in the second. Off the draw, it's chopped at by Wadanchi, but saved by Diver at the point. Sakeshi, back for Diver, center stripe to Sakeshi. This one-timer takes off like a rocket from a NASA launch pad and goes high into the back mesh. Three oh two to go in the second. That only 13 seconds into the power play. Face off left side of Perry. Off the draw, straight up high for a shot from Rapensky. And this one banks off a body. Stick slashed out of the hands of Bonchi. No call there. Play continues. Bonchi has his stick back. And the Cats have the zone. Diver walking in from the center point. Now to Sakeshi. Now to the near side. Into the slot where deflection chance goes just wide. Cats hold it in. Diver. Wrist shot, he scores! And Chris Diver straight down Broadway and past Chase Perry with a bit of traffic in front. Could Bismarck will get two more minutes of power play time here. So again, the high-tech automotive penalty kill is on the ice for Wenatchee. And it's been out there a lot, and it's hard to score when you're down a man constantly. And Wenatchee has spent most of this second period down a man. Diver, center stripe, has the most recent goal to Sakeshi. One-timer block. Skips away from the reach of Rivera, who was about to clear it. Comes back to the slot. One-time shot from McDowell is blocked. Great effort from Rivera on this penalty kill so far. Diver works around some traffic. Shot stopped by Perry. Loose for a moment before he will clamp down. 32 seconds into the power play. 156 left in period two. A must kill for Wenatchee. If they go down three, their chances of winning are even more narrow than if they are down two, which they will be at this rate going into period three. Off the draw. The Wild will find it and clear it all the way down. They had thoughts of a shorthanded rush from Mathias, who comes over for a hard whack at Sakeshi. So when Anchi gets their first full clear and down ice come the Cats across the line far side. Pass through the box, deflected to the corner, found and swiped all the way down by Salvato. Fifty seconds left in the power play for Bismarck. Up ice, it's dropped off to the near side. Bonchi works it away from Giesler. Back up the wall, Coin could not quite find the handle. Turn back to Giesler, now up high. Shot, reflected low slot, hops high in the air, splashes down near side circle, and now at the wall at the hash marks. It's plunk free by Coin. Through the middle for Algren, he'll go for a shorthanded swim, why not? Far corner, run off the puck by Diver. Power plays down to a dozen seconds for Bismarck. Rapensky up ice. Dribbles a pass that winds up on the blade of Giesler in the far circle. Knocked down from behind by Jones. Play continues. Matthias has the puck. When Anchi's man is out and up ice. And Harris, who was serving the penalty, would have been gone at Aaron Nelson. But 
The pass instead just worked as a clear of the zone. Not sure if Wenatchee missed a chance there or not. Harris may have had a breakaway. Salvato shoves Malkmus down, and now Wenatchee has odd man rush the other way. Matthias with Harris. Matthias, far side circle, wheels to Harris, and he throws it wide of the net. Can opener. Several states away. Third period down and underway. 159 of carryover power play time coming to the Bobcats, who move from right to left offensively in this third frame. Wenatchee will go the opposite direction. And this is the 10th Bobcat power play of the game. And they already lead this contest 3-1. to one. Repensky having a bit of trouble with it, trying to leave his own end. Puck given away, and this is just flown down easily by Bonchi from the red line in. 90 seconds now left on the Bobcat. Man advantage. Jacques, who's sitting on a hat trick. It's tipped away from his reach at the red line, and Repensky retrieves near his own blue line. Again, I originally had tagged Chris Diver for that goal on the power play, the most recent one for the Cats, and here comes Diver again, barreling across the near side, stripe into the corner in the Wenatchee zone, contacted by Matthias. Puck comes free at ropes to the far side point, held in by Repensky. To Jacques, Repensky fakes a slapper. Goes to the far side where it's broomed back for Diver now, who trades positions with Rapinski. And a wrist shot sent down the slot, and a shot off a block attempt. Goes to the far side circle, cranks over the net, and McDowell having some trouble trying to keep it in. Eventually does from his knees to the near corner. 40 seconds left on the power play, and now the puck skips free and goes back out to center. Some slick ice after the Zambonis hit it in that intermission. Quickly across the line, here come the Cats. This is cued free and back to center, however, by a quick stick from Matthias. 24 seconds left in the man advantage. Here is number 24, Dan Kovar, for the Bobcats. Behind the net, Tamario. Flipping this one over to the near side corner, picked up by Giesler, fires it back up high to the near side now for Rapensky. Seven seconds left on the power play. Shot knocked down in front. It's loose. What a pass saved by Perry, who eventually covers up after he was hacked hard by Malkmus down low. Two seconds left in the power play. Mullen is up and out now. He'll go back to the bench. That's the backside of his double minor for roughing after that three of Coin chips it deep near corner inside the Bismarck zone. Back of the net, Rivera got more of the boards than Rapensky, who he was looking for. Rapensky's stick shattered, goes the opposite way to the far side circle. And DeMario is not able to get a shot away. And now it's to back check quickly to take away a breakaway chance for Malkmus. DeMario with it now at center to the near side of the red line for Rimshaw. Trying to gun one towards the net. That's blocked. Gets it back. Shot. Flip down in front. Pies in his second chance and diving out on his tummy to save it is Nelson being waved off Bonchi wrestled off the puck by McDowell in back of the net wild prevail and on the gallop here's Harris through the center circle straight down the slot and he lost control of the puck trying to go in towards the net trailing the play Loggins keeps it alive for a moment and the puck skips off a body and goes back out to center. Dunnigan given a rude ride by Jones into the near side wall in the Wenatchee zone. And now the Wild lose control of the puck at the side of the net. Nearly a disaster for Chase Perry. 640 gone in period three. Loggins to Harris trying to send it towards the net. Blocked. Harris has it back and open. And he hit the post. Can you believe it? Another huge break and a penalty call on the way to Bismarck. This was a tie game but by half an inch it stays out off the near side iron off the timeout a face off on the far side of center nearest to the bismarck stripe and it's won by the bobcats who will fire it all the way down ice to the far corner and that's icing on bismarck so the face off will come back inside of the bobcats den Well, these two teams have played some magical games against each other in history of the two squads. I know this is a brand new Wenatchee Wild team, but the first incarnation of the Wild under previous ownership, the best hockey games I saw in my six seasons of calling Wild hockey, second season Robertson Cup Championship, Wild out of it, but what a game they played with Bismarck. This has been...
a pretty good game, too, if not for maybe a few extras that we could live without. Spinning in the far corner, here's Rapensky inside of his own zone as we go back to live action. From center, surging across the line, here's Dunnigan. No other play, so he drops it deep. Picked up by Zakov, flicked off his stick, and then just funneled through some traffic and out to safety by DeMario. Perfect curling distance there, too, as there's no icing. It went dead just before the end line. Reuter got the free hand out on Zakov, and on these latest penalties, it's a roughing call to Reuter. I do not know what diver took. Off the draw, this is Flub back to center, and Gumarov will wax it back down the near wall into the Bismarck zone. Kazupski charging in hard, lays a check, but the puck slips past his reach and goes down ice. Now Jones in a bit of a jumble down the far side, and a surging Bobcat will poke this to the far corner. That's McDowell. Spins around after swiping it from Jones, tries to center. That gets knocked down. Kazupski out of the zone. Trying to pop it over for Mathias. Kazupski has the puck. Three on one rush. Gumarov in the slot shot just wide. Picked up by Kazupski. Tries a short side stuff. And that's stopped by Nelson. Jones. Straight down the middle to the hash marks. Intercepted by the Cats. Up ice. Here comes McDowell. Across the line. Drop pass. Far side. And the most dangerous man in the building. Stanislav Zhakov looking for the trick. Just barely had that tip free from behind before he could pull the trigger. Potty net waiting for him as well. Power play gets underway for the Cats with a face-off to the right of Chase Perry. This is a high-tech automotive penalty kill for the Wild. Salvato finds this one and rubs it all the way down ice off the clear. Kovar, from his own zone, sets sail through the middle. Across the far side, drops it for Sakeshi at the point. Walks in, finds Rupensky. Puck on edge. Drops it back over to the far wall, given away by Kovar. Found and flung the other way, all the way out and down. 35 seconds of the power pay melted away. 3.26 left in regulation. Three all tie. Kovar rifles it far corner inside the Wenatchee zone. Banshi has it, lines it up. It's knocked down by Sakeshi, roped out in front. Point has it in the wild. Shorthanded the other way. Jones tries to crank one towards the net. That hops to the far corner, and now Jones will just go in and kill some time. Plunged free from his reach by Sakeshi. He's gassed. He's got to go to the bench for a change, which he will now. 52 seconds left in the power play. Quick stick from Rivera will hop the puck the opposite direction on a partial clear. 45 seconds left. In the man advantage for Bismarck, 244 to go in the third. High flip near corner, wild zone. Off the blade of Rapensky. Funneled back out, a swing and a miss from Matthias to clear the zone. Rapensky seals things up, drops it near corner. Gets it back now at the hash marks along the wall. Goes up high, one-timer from Zhakov, skips over the net. Found and cleared by Wenatchee. 17 seconds left. Out of the net, Nelson. Fires it down ice, finds Rapensky. Dribbles away from his reach. Salvato scatters it down the far side, and then off a couple of bounces, it finds the stick of Harris, who clears the zone. Up and out now is Mitch Demario.